All right. Let's watch the Milton Freeman. Oh, let me add a little marker. Okay. Let's watch the Milton Freeman thing. Okay, boys. Hi, girls. Why is it we have so many uh, millionaires and everything in the United States, and we still have so many impoverished people who try to get up into the world? Why is it we have this lack of money where people who can't support themselves decently and get a decent job where all these big men are up on top making oodles and oodles of money? They don't need it. They can only eat that much, eat in a sleep in the bed. And what do you suppose bed. they do it? If they don't eat it and don't, uh, don't use it, what do you suppose they, they do They hoard it. it. They what do you mean they hoard it? Do you mean it? they put it under their pillow? That's right. No. <laughs> they keep investing it. Investing it in That's what? Right. Oh, no. She got off on the wrong foot already. You fuck, you fell under the trap like in two seconds. You didn't have to say anything, you fell under the trap. No, yes, rich people do tend to hoard a lot a lot of money. They don't do anything with it. They just keep it because they literally don't know what to do with it. Um, it just sits there. And maybe it sits in a low interest, well, yeah, low interest rate bank account. So maybe it's building a little bit of wealth. But a lot of wealth just kind of sits. Well, it does. It's, it, it is true. So... People do sit on wealth. Rich people aren't always just spending all of their wealth at one time. You have to agree with that. There's no, a rich person isn't always a rich person isn't sitting at net zero with all their finances in in the stock market. Rich people aren't constantly investing every single dime they have. There's a percentage of their wealth that they invest and make money on, and then there's a percentage of their wealth that they keep at home. So that they don't go bankrupt tomorrow because of this of a stock market crash. There's no way that that rich people are spending all of their money every single day on stocks. They're not exchanging all their money into the stock exchange every single fucking day. Unless you respond, then no. I'll catch you watching the video in a second. <laughs> now, maybe a lot of... Uh, now, maybe your argument's going to be... Just before you type it out, I'm not sure. Maybe your argument's going to be that a lot of people... A lot of rich people, let's say Jeff Bezos, a lot of their wealth is based off of their own company because they own a lot of stock. Okay. They invest the majority of it, though. Well, we would have to dig into that to see if that's true. But even if they invest 51% of it, that's 40% not being invested. I'm pretty sure a I'm pretty sure rich people aren't living with just like 10k in their bank account. They're gonna have like a billionaire Bloomberg. The reason why he's capable of spending. 300 million dollars on the election right now is because he was sitting on 300 million dollars in his bank account way more than that probably just sitting on it like okay i'm gonna go spend this on the election right now i'm not saying that he can't have that money sitting in his bank account but there needs to be more taxation so that before the money starts sitting in his bank account there's a there's a tax there's more tax on it to make money, you have to have money. Most of Jeff Bezos' wealth is tied up in assets like his business. Yeah, okay, so the point I thought you would have, you have. To make money, you have to spend money. Yeah, of course. But the the, the point is, is that he's not spending all of his money to make money. He's There's going to be a percentage of his wealth that he's hoarding so that he doesn't lose all of his wealth overnight. That would be completely idiotic. You'd be a complete dumbass to have all of your wealth in your business that would be so dumb that would be in immeasurably stupid to invest every single penny you make back into your business because tomorrow if amazon crashes your entire life saving your entire you're fucked so there's no way that jeff has all of his money in his own business there's a good percentage of it, a large percentage of his, of his wealth will obviously be tied up in his business. Of course, of course. And that money should be taxed at a reasonable rate. And we can talk about if it's being taxed currently at a reasonable rate and blah, 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 blah. But right now we're talking about the hoarding aspect. There's going to be a large portion 
of his wealth, not a majority, let's say, I'll be charitable, not a majority of his wealth, but a large portion of his wealth that he's just sitting on. And that's like indisputable. We're not even like, we're not even talking about like, we're not even talking about what ought we do with that money. I'm just, we're just, I'm just trying to talk about that there is that money, that there is money that he's sitting on. Okay, we'll get into what the issue could possibly be. But the lady has already fallen in the trap that she she said that he's investing the money. So I'm pretty sure Wilton Freeman's going to go, yeah, he is investing all of his money. So he's not hoarding any of it. There's no problem. And then he's gonna, and then it's over. That's I'm pretty sure what Wilton Freeman is about to say. And she already fell into the trap by saying that he isn't that billionaires are investing money. We'll go over the clip because it's 30 seconds long. Over here. Uh, why is it we have so many uh, millionaires and everything in the United States? And we still have so many impoverished people mm -hmm. who try to get up into the world. Why is it we have this lack of money where people who can't support themselves decently and get a decent job? So she's saying that there's a bunch of people who have a fuck ton of money and a bunch of people who don't have a fuck ton of money. No, but listen, let's just listen. Where all these big men are up on top making oodles and oodles of money. They don't oodles of money. They, they don't need the money. That much, mm -hmm. in a and what do you suppose they do it? If they don't eat it and don't, uh, don't use it, what do you suppose they, they do They hoard it. it? So they hoard it. So they hoard it, which is true. Some people do hoard a fuck ton of money. Can you turn it up quiet real dude? Oh, okay. Can I turn it up in the thingy? Okay, no, I can't. Turn it up here. That's everyone though. No one has all of their money invested. Shouldn't we be allowed to have spending money and choose what we want to spend it on? Yes, I'm I'm not getting into any aughts. The pro the 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 problem is what I what I said was the trap, is that there's a percentage of wealth that is being hoarded. And the trap she fell into is that she said that they inve that hoarding counts as investing. So we haven't gotten into what Wilton Freeman is saying. But what I'm assuming Wilton Freeman might say, it, this hopefully he's smarter than this, but if he's a complete moron, he'll say, yeah, you're right. The rich people are investing. So therefore, trickle-down economics. Therefore, poor people poor because poor or whatever. But what I'm saying is that she got caught in a trap because – there is a percentage of wealth that people are hoarding. Everyone hoards a little bit of their wealth, obviously, or you should. Now, some people don't, but you should have like 10K for emergency spending, right? And uh, and millionaires have like whatever amount of money hoarded, and it's, it's undeniable that they're hoarding it. But she fell into a trap that she included investing as hoarding, which is completely not true, and Milton Freeman's going to dig into that. They put it under their pillows? That's right. No. They, they keep investing. See, he says they put it under their pillows, and she says, no, they invest it, which is not true. There is a portion of wealth that sits under a pillow. Isn't there a good portion of U.S. citizens that live paycheck to paycheck? Yeah. But what we're talking about is like most middle – like you should have a section of your wealth held off as an emergency. Of, of course, some people don't live like that, and that's a whole other discussion on, on, on poor people. Investing it. Investing it in That's what? That's right. Yeah. What are they invested in? Well, in oil and everything. See, so already we're off. She wanted to bring up why are millionaires hoarding money and what can we do with that hoarded money? And now we're already, we're already fucked. We're already off that rail. And now we're onto the rail of investing. What are they investing in? And Milton Freeman's just going to carry her down this pathway so that she agrees to trickle down economics, which is demonstrably not the boss would false. Trick on economics doesn't work. Think where I mean all these other people who are. What are they invested in? Don't get off the subject. No. What are they invested in? Well, so he, she's going to say, "Well, they're invested in businesses," and then he's going to say, "Oh, those businesses pay people. Oh, therefore, millionaires good." Ali invested in a lot of uh, different things that the little people need. Well, do they invest in factories? Yes. Does some of that money end up in machines? Yes. Do those factories and machines provide ordinary work? Yep. Here's the exact point I was just talking about. He's carrying her down the trickle-down economics path. <laughs> people with jobs or not. What do you suppose the productivity of this country would be and of the, uh, the wage rate would be if the total amount of capital in this country today was what it was 100 years ago? Where do you suppose the improvements in productivity come from except from the, re the investment by...
I don't even need to watch the rest of this video because my exact point was just said right there, okay? He's talking about where do you think this improved, like, like, what would we do without an investment? The argument shouldn't be about investment. It's about what what are rich people, what should we do about the pillow of, of wealth under, uh, sorry, the wealth under somebody's pillow? We don't care. Investment's good. I like investment. Capitalism, good. Mucho bueno investorino people of their savings but if you want to say that that the trickle down economics is mutual no sorry to break it to you but let me go to your fundamental question first place okay nirvana is not for this world there is no paradise of course okay okay i'd say nothing there's no issue with hoarding money well then you'd be wrong then you're not a capitalist either right you, uh, <sighs> capitalism uh, the economy grows exponentially the more people are spending money so if you have a large portion of your wealth just hoard it away you're not contributing to the economy in any way whatsoever this is why yang brings up ubi because once jobs are gone once automation takes over there will be no more money cycling through the system unless you give money to people because there's no jobs in a society where there are no jobs you just have to give money to people so that the cycle so that there's a cycle to the economy. So if people are hoarding money, they're not adding to the cycle of money. They're just taking their share and, and sitting on it and doing nothing with it, not adding to the economy in any way whatsoever, which I would say is a bad thing. Of course, we've got a lot of people who are poorly off. But they have added with whatever made... Wait, what? But they have added with whatever made them rich. You don't need to clarify that. There's a... I don't really understand your question there. But they have added what? Are you saying that they added to the economy? So like when they made the one hundred billion dollars that they made, they were taxed on that, and then that's all. And then anything else they get to hoard. Take Jeff Bezos. He wanted to hoard. That's fine. Amazon is adding to the economy. Yeah, but he could add more if he invests what he's hoarding. So do you think the government should take the small amount? I mean, I'm con I'm pretty sure what Jeff Bezos has under his pillow isn't a small amount. But what I'm saying is that there should be more taxation so that there's less money going under your pillow in the first place. All the people he hired making money. Okay, trickle down economics. We already pay income tax and sales tax. Uh, I think, well, sales tax... I'm pretty sure it's a regressive tax system. It affects poor people more than rich people. The middle class is paying most in taxes. Yes. Yeah. So we want to raise that and put it on the more rich people. We already pay income tax and sales tax. And Jeff pays Bezos mostly skips out on a lot of income tax because he makes his money through stocks. Jeff Bezos' income is only like $250,000 a year. But what's the issue with trickle? Trickle down just doesn't work. The issue with trickle down is that it doesn't work. Yes, the rich get richer, but the poor also get richer. No, the poor typically stay relatively the same. They go up a little bit. The rich get exponentially richer, and the poor stay relatively poor. And we can see this by the fact that wages have stagnated in the United States and in Canada up until, like, what, 2018, when the wage went up to $14 an hour. Wages completely stagnated and did not increase with inflation. So trickle down didn't work and hasn't worked. I mean, you can see that with wages. The minimum wage in the United States is what, like 720, whatever the fuck it is, seven something, and it hasn't changed and hasn't, and if it changed with inflation, it'd be around 1450 or something, I think, right? That's what the minimum wage would be in the United States if it, if it was tied to inflation, but it's not. While the rich got richer, the poor stayed pretty much the same. The average American household is, is up 5K under this president, though. What? What do you mean? But even then, so I'll, I'll, I'll take this at face value. I'm assuming that you're saying that they have 5K more in value, right? Wages have gone up recently in America. Yeah, but not in... Okay, you're misunderstanding. Of course, what I mean... Okay, so... What you're talking about is the rich, yes, the rich got richer, but the poor are also getting richer. But in comparison, the rich are getting exponentially more rich 
They're they're getting super rich while the poor are getting ah, a little bit more money, right? So yes, wages have gone up. Sure. Let's say wages have gone up a dollar, a whole dollar. To rich people, they're making multi-millions more in the time it took for Americans to get a wage bonus, a wage increase from the 1970s to now of a dollar. Millionaires and billionaires have been making infinitely more money, right? So yes, maybe the average household in America has gone up 5k. They have 5 extra thousand dollars or 5k extra of wealth, whatever it may be. Under this president. Sure, but the rich have gained even more. So we'll take the tax cuts for example, right? So the tax cuts added, let's say, 400 extra dollars to uh to the average American uh, uh average American citizen at the end of the year, okay? 400 extra dollars in the bank. Great. To the rich, they were they were getting a couple million at the end of the year. Yeah, but everyone's not doing better. But the problem is that everyone's not doing better equally, okay? So the poor are like a little tiny grain of rice better. A little tiny grain of rice better. While the rich are fucking Eiffel Towers better than the poor. Like one millimeter on a, on a, on a, oh, he has imperial system. Fuck. Okay. Yeah. Well, stick with the grain of rice compared to the Eiffel Tower. Like the poor are getting richer by a grain of rice per year, while millionaires and billionaires are getting richer by empire state buildings per year. (laughs) If everyone gets better equally, or as close to equally as possible, it's better. If the federal minimum wage went up to fifteen dollars an hour, all businesses would suffer from unemployment, and and unemployment would skyrocket. And then when they want to raise taxes on businesses on top of that, they should just raise the minimum wage at the state level. Well, what's the difference between a federal minimum wage and a state minimum wage being fifteen? Now, I agree that it should be a state minimum wage, but that's because in Canada we have a provincial minimum wage of fourteen dollars an hour and our economy, the Ontario economy, the strongest one in, in Canada, has not been affected whatsoever. If anything, more jobs are available. You're getting paid more, obviously the minimum wage went up. More jobs available, people getting paid more, more capital is moving throughout the Ontario economy. Of course, but the gap between how the rich are being affected and the poor are being affected is immense. And my goal and the goal of people I agree with, I guess, or whatever, reasonable human beings, is to is to lessen that gap. Bring it as close together as possible without destroying capitalism. And that's what that's what I'm a sock dam, is to bring that gap as close together as possible without shattering the system. So, higher taxes. I'm not saying 90% tax. Bernie's, cl- Bernie's plan has a high, the highest marginal tax rate is 52%. If you don't understand what a marginal tax rate is, we can go over that. Of course, in- I'm not saying get rid of inequality, income inequality or inequality of any sort. I understand that that's a pretty much fundamental thing of society is that there are going to be some form of inequality. Of course. And of course, you choose what you do with your money. Of course. But there's a lot of barriers in your way and, and hurdles and stuff like that. You need your educa- proper education. Of course, rich people will automatically have a better education than poor people. If you're born into a rich family, uh, you will most... Unless, of course, your parents decide to completely tell you to live on your own 100%, even though you'll have some privilege on top of that um, because you'll know people because you're rich and all this stuff. Anyways, but I, I think most people that disagree are against the taxes. What? What do you mean? Although in reality, inequality is determined by prior generations, not by freedom. Sure. But I think most people that disagree are against the taxes. What do you mean? Disagree with me? Who, do, who disagrees with what? Is 
a very simplistic thing to do. Republicans slash libertarians don't like taxes. Yeah? Yeah, okay. So? I agree that they don't like taxes. Like, we could have a whole discussion on why taxes are an inevitability of society. And, like, what to do with taxes. It's like a whole other dis discussion on what to do with taxes. So by increasing taxes, you remove freedom. I would disagree with that. But we have a complete, I guess, different worldview on freedom. Therefore, you can see the majority of the rich are people who obtain their finances not by working, rather by inheriting capital. True? Or the fuel times. Yeah. A lot of rich people do inherit their capital through, in, through, uh, through in inheriting. Let's... Like, you can't deny that. <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't agree that r increasing taxes removes your freedom. That doesn't, doesn't really make any sense. Because it's not like your taxes are just being sucked away into a black hole. Now, you might think that. You might think the government is just a tax black hole. But um, the government gives you many programs that help you uh, in many different ways. So with public schooling, public schooling allows you to have the freedom to go to school and get an education equal to anyone else on the, on, in the, in the, in your nation, right? So public schooling should be that you get an equal education to, to people around the entire nation. Yep. Yeah, no, you still, but you still have that freedom. It's just that you live in a society that you want to care for other people, stuff like that. Like, if you, you would have a lot less freedom in an anarcho-capitalist society than in a heavily regulated economy, of course. Because if you have, if you have the freedom to spend the money however you want, somebody's going to pay to have you killed or whatever, or you, it's going to go back to feudal times. Do you think that the feudal times were super free? You had freedom to do whatever you want with your money, so the rich just got extremely powerful, and the poor became serfs. So you can move to a different country is an option. Um, and if you don't like the programs, sucks, I guess. Again, like your option is to move to a different country. Like this is a whole discussion on how society works on how we ought to, 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 to work as a society. Um, because like this is getting into anarcho-capitalist stuff, right? This is super hyper libertarianism. This is feudalism, getting into the feudalism talks, right? Um, because like if you were capable of opting out of public school, then you would have a bunch of fundamentalist Christians who just wanna, uh, who just wanna homeschool their kids. So now they're less educated or ed educated incorrectly or differently than everyone else. And you have all these a million different problems. Anyway, don't get me wrong. I'm not claiming for zero taxes, but I'm, but taxing 50% of anyone's income seems criminal. Well, guess what? Pretty much nobody, the only people getting taxed in Bernie's plan that getting taxed at like 50% is in the millions of dollars. But it, it, it's a different conversation on why do you think 50% is criminal, right? Why is that immoral to you to be taxed at 50%? So now I could understand it for somebody who's poor because if you only make 10K a year and the cost of living is 7K a year, you literally can't afford to be taxed at 50%. You would, you would, you would would die. But if you're a millionaire and you get taxed at 50%, you still have half a million dollars a year to deal, to deal with, right? I think it's better for citing a whole to keep the money in our pockets, not to give it to the government. The government is extremely wasteful and inefficient. Yeah, so this is just the government black hole argument, which isn't true. <laughs> no one spends someone else's money as carefully as they spend their own. But the the 
the point of a government right is it's a representation of the people. So the, the, the money the government grabs is their money. So they would spend it carefully. You're the one voting on the government. So the government, if the government is wasting money, you vote them out. Easy. You live in a society of people. This is undeniable. We have to get along. It's undeniable. If you want, you can go and try to live on a pl on a on an island all by your lonesome. Your money won't be worth anything. But because like this is a whole other discussion on what where does the value come from? Okay, so you have American dollars. Those American dollars are given to you by the government. So you're already the only reason you have wealth in the first place is because you live in the United States. That money. If the United States didn't exist, American dollars wouldn't be worth fuck all. If somebody takes the fruits of your labor without your consent, is that not that? Okay, don't say that because that's a socialist argument, okay? So you're literally going into socialism right now. Because uh, you would just switch that for labor being your worth, right? So you would argue that labor is your value. So somebody who is paying you without your consent is the key there yeah but you're consenting to living in this country so therefore you're consenting to taxation right if you don't want to consent to to, to the, the theft then leave and what i mean what i mean by like that's like getting into uh, like you're, you're getting pretty close to uh to, to commie talk there is that uh they would say that labor that you being paid a wage is a theft to your labor because the, the the wages you're being paid is only a fraction of what your what your labor is actually worth blah 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 Yeah, no, but you're consensually living in this country. Right? Every single day that you live here, you are consenting to living here. The moment you turn 18 years old, you can get up or whatever. So I might change depending on whenever you have the freedom to do things without the constant, like without control of your parents, you can leave the country and go somewhere that has no taxes. You could do that. You are consenting daily to being in this country or in the United States or whatever country you're in. The only reason you have value in the first place is because the United States or whatever country you have has value. The currency they produce has value. Yes, that value comes from you, but that's why you're allowed to keep a, a hefty proportion uh, a portion of your of your earnings because you are increasing the value of the dollars but the government is in control of those dollars because well they create the nation there's a balance there's a, there's 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 cohesion right cuz to have total freedom right if you want if you want total freedom over your wealth then you can't have a state cuz then Right, you'd have to go right straight down to the zero taxes. Right? If the government didn't create the nation, though, it's just it just governs. The government didn't create the nation, though; it just governs. It did what? <laughs> yeah, no, the government did create the nation. That's what government is. Is is governing and creating of nations. The the constitution was a political act made by the government. The government is a representation of the people, or it could be the people directly. Like, the government is the nation. Unless, Chris, you want to say that people living in the nation are the nation, and, like, no borders, stuff like that, then f fine. But then the government is just a representation of those people.
Like, the formation of a government is the formation of a country and a nation. That's how countries are formed, is by forming a government. Chat be like, what was this, a funny meme? After Senator Rand Paul was allegedly assaulted at his home in... We are witnessing a radicalization of libertarians all across the country. All polls seem to predict a landslide victory for Rand Paul. Oh my god, look at Bernie. What the fuck? <laughs> Oprah, 5%. Dear viewers, we have just received... I guess you could say that, but the country was formed before government. Government was added after. No, I would say that they're in tandem... Now, the institutions of government, you could say were added after. But we just have like I guess we're just having different definitions of government because like to form the nation you have to get a semblance of government. The institutions of government may have been added afterwards, right? So you have how the tax system works would have been added after you formed your nation because there's no you don't need to worry about taxations before your nation's even formed. So some institutions of government were of course formed after the formation of your government but or the formation of your nation but the government and the nation form together because a nation doesn't exist without a government and a government doesn't exist without a nation well technically not true because you can have the un and it's a government of governments you know what i'm saying a nation doesn't really exist without a government so to form a nation you have to form a government so both basically are made at the same time. And then institutions of said government will be added later. Received word that libertarian death squads are taking over the capital. We have come to take our country back. <laughs> And survivors will be enslaved by country. Good morning, America. Big story this morning as the Agriculture Corporation declared exclusive rights for the oxygen that plants produce. The monthly subscription for breeding will be of 60 Bitcoin. That's my name is TK48. Yeah, my parents couldn't afford the more mainstream copyrighted names. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm a senior advisor at McDonald Megacorp. And today, well, it's going to be a big day. Get the hell off me property, hurrah, hurrah. Get a taste of me, I'm 60, hurrah, hurrah. In other news, another oh. Disney facility was allegedly attacked by the Louis Vuitton Air Force. Oh my the God. conflict between the two companies has only gotten worse since Louis Vuitton accused Disney of violating the non-aggression principle when sound waves from Star Wars 16 entered Louis Vuitton property. <laughs> Experts also say that Disney's decision to replace their army with Venezuelan child soldiers last year because they cost less Bitcoin might... <laughs> True. Be the cause of the repeated defeats on the battlefield. Mr. TK48, the council is waiting for you. Mexicans, I will underpay with roses. Day was true. The way would all be. All right, so you're probably wondering how can this guy have a plan to expand the company when all land is privately owned and all monopolies already taken? Well, the answer is North Korea. What the hell is a North Korea? Can we sell that? No, no. It's a statist land, not privately owned by anyone. If we could take control of that land, we would have total monopoly of the entire market for 23 million people. 
Wow. Now the North Korean status still have their artillery pointed towards Seoul. And we have McDonald's private properties in Seoul. <laughs> so we'll have to take that out first. For that, I suggest deploying the MiG Air Force in the Sea of Japan and take care of it with a MiG nuclear airstrike. A MiG nuclear airstrike? But air the MiG nuclear program is for recreational purposes only. We don't have to make all our nukes ourselves. We can buy them, like normal people do. We can probably get one for like 65 bitcoins at the Walmart down my street. Anyway, once that's done, then we can have an EMP deal with the nuclear facilities and then send the MiG Marines in to secure the rest Mc of the territory. But won't the nuke cause some damage? Yeah, but even if it kills like 1 million people, it's still 22 million people we get a monopoly on. We can even cancel out some of the loss by selling gas masks. I just have one problem. What about the non-aggression principle? I'm glad you asked. See, in 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea, where there are now McDonald's private properties. So they <laughs> technically broke the NAP first. <laughs> My god, TK48, you're one hell of a genius. Amazing. Hey, MB-77, have you seen that new thing from NSA Corp? If you upgrade to Gold subscription, they can tell you if someone's radio transmissions are interfering with your private property. Let's try it now, huh? What the? Sir, it looks like someone here is transmitting information to Burger King. Oh no. A spy for Burger King. The name is a reference to statism. And you were at my daughter's wedding. Nothing personal, Ronan. I'll send your family to the McGulag for 7,000 years. The Korean Monopoly, you see. It belongs to Burger King. Get you, Burger King! <laughs> <laughs> ah, God. Alright, let's watch the rest of exactly what I predicted would happen. But if you look at it over time, if you get a sense of proportion, the well-being of a ordinary people... Hey, look, this is the other point we talked about. Here it is. Look, it's like I predicted everything Milton Freeman would have said. ...has been the main thing that has been improved by economic progress and economic growth and development. And residual, most residual hard cases of poverty today are the result, again, of a failure of government. Why do we have a teenage, black teenage unemployment rate in 30 to 40 percent? Because of two failures of government. One, a failure to provide decent schooling which is a governmental responsibility, has been, whether it should be or not, it has been. And second, because of a minimum wage rate, which prevents those kids who haven't had decent schooling from getting jobs at low pay at which they can earn the skills on the jobs that would enable them to rise to higher pay. If you look into the sources of poverty... What? Okay, hold on. What? <laughs> which prevents those kids who haven't had... What if we just take the note from China, kill the poor, then everyone will be rich? Uh, I'm going to go with a, a yikes on that one. <laughs> at decent schooling from getting jobs at the wage rate, which prevents because of two failures of government. One, a failure to provide decent schooling. The schooling one is dumb because, like, okay, just because the government might be bad at giving schooling doesn't mean we need to decrease taxes. Just means you need to do a better job at schooling. Which is a governmental responsibility. Has been, whether it should be or not, it has been. And second, because of a minimum wage rate. 
which and then a minimum wage rate which is also dumb because um, the point of having a job isn't to get experience to move up the ladder. Like, the experience you get from McDonald's isn't going to move you up the ladder. Sorry to break it to you. McDonald's isn't... You're not going to become the CEO or anything important in McDonald's by working at... It's just... It's not going to happen, my dude. You're not going to amount to anything by working at McDonald's. We all can all agree to this, right? That working at McDonald's isn't the go a good thing to do. It's not going to get you much of anywhere. Why does it look so fucked? Whatever. So, like, the low-wage work, getting you experience, not true. Okay. Prevents those... What if we had private schools, but the government gave everyone a st uh, stipend to choose the school, so it was better mix of both. Uh, so, yeah, so here's the problem with school choice. Um, not everyone has the opportunity to uh, actually go to a different school. It's not like every school in a city is right next to each other, right? You might have a school in the south end of town, north end of town, east and west. If you live in the south end of town, and that school happens to be a shit fucking horrible privately run school, well, then now you need to have the privilege to be able to go to the north end of town, west end of town, or east end of town. And if you don't have that privilege, let's say you don't have a car, your parents can't drive you in the morning, you need to take the bus. The bus system doesn't go that way because it's not profitable for the private school to bus everyone around. Maybe they don't even run buses because it would be a waste of money. They just have everyone walk to school because um, that they don't have to have an expense if they're just walking to school so the the only way you can get to a school is by getting there yourself and if you can't do that then you can't go to the school so then the choice doesn't matter and you have and you're forced to go to a shit school instead of having all schools be on an equal level around the entire nation or the entire not even the entire nation around this the, the state will go because it's provincial in canada so we'll go state level in america it doesn't even have to be a nation thing it just needs to be provincially based or state based Yeah, but what if the what if the profit, what if the money they get from the the stipend is less than it would be worth to to bus, right? Who knows how much a busing system costs uh, to get your kids to school, and however much a stipend would be, like how much is, would all this cost, right? It's not like it's not like your university has a school has a busing system, right? That's a privately owned school. Why it doesn't have a busing system? Wouldn't it want a busing system so that more people can get towards this the, the college so that more people pay money there? No, that's not. yeah. No, I know, but we can look at other examples, right? It's not like universities and and private schools. It's not like private schools. Yeah, actually, private schools that do exist right now don't have a busing system. In the U.S. work, like I said, for the most part. Well, I would say, yeah, but... So, this is a different question on levels of education. So, I would agree that higher education, post-secondary education, should probably be on a higher level. Um, and probably cost money, because it's more of an investment into your, into your job. But the prestigious schools bring people to you. What? But being prestigious school brings people to you. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, never mind. I, I misread that. But being a prestigious school brings people to you. Well, yeah, of course. But, again, if you don't have access to that, you can't go. So if you can't afford it, now, with the stipend, you would be able to afford it. But, again, if you can't travel across town, you're fucked. Now, with universities, it's different because it's a higher uh, form of education. It's more to set up your career, so it's an investment because uh, typically a university or college uh, education should lead directly to a job. So blah 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 blah. This is a whole discussion on what or not, but, but we'll, we'll mostly agree because I don't think, for the most part, I don't think that uh, university should be free. I believe that, like in Canada, we have an uh, OSAP system, Ontario Student uh, Application Payment. Um, where basically uh, 40% of your school is free. 40% of your tuition is a grant. Mm. 
So I would agree that like uh, higher education doesn't need to be free, but uh, we're talking about public education, which is like a base, a base starting level education that everyone should get, because um, that's how you function in society is with that education. If you don't have education, you're pretty fucked in society. So uh, allowing that to be accessible to everyone is super important, and the best way to do that is to make it public. It, it gets the most amount of access to most amount of people. Yeah, it gives the most amount of access to most amount of people. Do I want... Should I get stairs there? I don't even know. I have a path here. But it's kind of like, a go. It's like, pretty ugly. But I don't know if stairs would look any better. I could get some oak stairs, I guess, whatever. I wonder if I'll ever, 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 ever. <laughs> I wonder if they'll ever add, like, dirt stairs to Minecraft. I feel like it could look a little bit better, but I don't know. I don't know how it would look. I feel like they've tested it and been like. Ooh. It's something to make, like, going up dirt look more natural. Like, this looks cool-ish, not really. Anyways, let's go back to the video. Those kids who haven't had decent schooling from getting jobs at low pay at which they can earn the skills on the jobs that would enable them to rise to higher pay. If you look at the, the sources of poverty, you will find a very lot, most of them, are derived from bad, what I regard as wrong-headed government policies. Okay, it's basically the same. That's okay. But yeah, uh, school choice is uh, kind of regressive because not everyone has a, a, the opportunity to go across town to go to school. It's not like all the schools are in the same location. Um, so it's difficult for somebody to go across town to get an education. So having a basic level of education throughout your entire state is a good way to, uh, well, is the best way to have education to get to everyone. And if that system is failing, well, you get somebody in an office that will do a better job of conducting that education system, funding that education, education system, whatever needs to happen. Yo, thanks for the follow, buddy. I appreciate that.